Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa ala ali sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa ashabi wa barik wa sallim. My beloved jamaat wa muslimin, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord, the creator, the nourisher and the sustainer of the universe, and Allah's choicest blessings on our beloved and illustrious master, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tonight, inshallah, our honorable Hufad will read from the 24th juice, which also consists of Surah to Zumar, which is a 39th Surah of the Quran. And I want to specially hone in and focus tonight on two particular ayat, two verses of the Surah. Firstly, verse 42, where Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajim. Allah يتوفى الأنفس حين موتها والتي لم تمت في منامها ويمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون. Allah Almighty explains to us what happens to us on a daily or a nightly basis. Allah say every single night Allah is the one who makes you fall to sleep and then take your ruh out of your physical body. That is why every night our sleep is referred to as the minor death because our ruh exits our physical body. And Allah say that Allah Almighty keep back some of that souls and don't allow that souls to return in its physical bodies. And Allah is the one who returns some of the souls into the bodies and you open your eyes the next morning. So all of us go in a state of death, mini death or minor death every single night. Those of us who wake up is like the baby that is still connected to the mother through the umbilical cord. Our souls are still connected until Allah decides the soul can go back in and we open our eyes or the soul is withheld by Allah and does not return to the body. It is for that particular reason that our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaches us so beautifully that we must all try to implement this. Before you go to bed at night, go to bed with wudu. Go to bed with abdas. Because when you go to bed without wudu, your soul also comes out, but it is restricted. It goes as far as the ceiling and it cannot go beyond the room. But when you have wudu, that ruh is empowered to come out and travel beyond and evil has and even has the ability and the power to meet and converse with other arwah and with other souls. That is why at times we dream that we dream of deceased people. It is actually our ruh that is meeting with those souls. So it is a very good practice, the sunnah practice for us to go and sleep with wudu every single night when you get into bed. The second ayah I want to very quickly touch on is verse 50 of the same surah, Surah to Zumar, where Allah says, Qul, ya ibadiya alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Inna Allah yaghfiru al-dhuluba jami'a. Inna hu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. Wallahi, if you must truly understand the beauty of this Arabic language, we will appreciate this ayat, how Allah constructed so majestically and so divinely. Allah says to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Oh my beloved Habib, Qul ya ibadiya, say, Oh my beloved ibad, Oh my beloved servants, that those of you who transgressed against your own souls, who committed sins as high as the mountain, as vast as the ocean, say unto them, O oh my beloved Rasul, La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. For me, Wallahi, personally, I've drawn my inspiration from the interpretation of many scholars. 
They say that this particular ayah, verse of the Quran, gives you the most hope of salvation. Because all of us sin on a daily basis. We do wrong. And wallahi, if it's not for the mercy of Allah, we will head straight into the fire of hell. But Allah says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For he, Allah, is the one who forgives all sins. And then Allah in this particular ayah, so beautiful, Allah said, just listen to the emphasis. Allah said, Inna hu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. Verily he, he is the most forgiving and the most merciful. According to the Arabic language, Allah could have just said, Inna hu, inna hu al-ghafoor al-rahim that he is the most forgiving. But Allah put emphasis, Allah say, verily he, Allah, he is the most gracious, the most forgiving, and the most merciful. Maybe I can just conclude with a little example, a modern day example, because all of our lives are so busy with social media. And recently on social media, there was the circular that went around with regard to a person from Australia, Ali Bennett. Many of you must have seen this video clip, but so beautiful, because the lesson we can learn from here is that this particular man was a multi-billionaire. He had a showroom of Ferraris, a showroom of the best watches, a showroom of the best shoes, and all the brand names and one particular morning, he burned his lip with warm coffee, with hot coffee, and he went to look into the mirror, and he saw something strange in his mouth, and he went to the doctor. And after examination, he was told that he has stage four cancer. And they gave him three months to live. Can you imagine just when you think you have it all? Now life really starts. You have been given the death sentence. But again Allah shows us that the greatest of doctors, irrespective of how much Allah has empowered them and gifted them, they can't really tell you exactly when you are going to die. They gave him three months to live, but he lived for three years and a few days. He passed away now on the 11th of Ramadan. A beautiful ending Allah gave him. A magnificent janazah he had. But what was the turning point? This stage four cancer that he had, he said, I regard this as a gift from Allah. And the person who interviewed him, the sheikh who interviewed him, asked him, what do you mean? Cancer, you're going to die. Why do you say it's a gift from Allah? He said, because Allah didn't take me away just suddenly, just like that. Allah gave me time to open my eyes and to realize that all the riches at my disposal will not give me immortality. It will not keep me on this world. And he changed his life 360 degrees, took all his wealth, came to Africa, to one of the poorest nations in Africa, built school, built madrasa, build orphanage, make sadaqah to jariah, and uplift the poor because he realized now the wealth that Allah has given him in this world, he must now invest it in his akhirah. Let us for a moment sit still and think, what has Allah given me? What has Allah given you? Are you preparing for that grave that is very, very lonely? That grave that is very, very dark, and that grave that is very, very narrow. We have this month at our disposal. Use it as a capital Allah is giving you. Use it as the riches that Allah has given you, and invest our time, invest our energy, invest positively into my and your year after. No one is going to help me in my grave. No one is going to help you in the loneliness and the darkness of your grave. We, we have to work for our tomorrow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us hidayah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us 
the capacity to understand and imbibe this message that we can prepare for the meeting of our Lord, inshallah, amen.